Hey, everybody. I am super excited for this chat with Kajnaji, a leader in the AI agent and customer engagement, customer experience space. Alan, how are you? I'm really good. How are you? I'm well. I'm very excited for this time of year around Enterprise Connect. So much insight and news and announcements and uh, you know, engaging conversations like this one. Before we dive into all things AI agents and more, maybe introduce yourself, Alan, and your role. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm Alan Ranger. I'm the head of marketing at Cognigy. Uh, I've been with the company for just over a year. So as you can imagine, it's been a pretty exciting year with uh, everything that's happened with large language models and generative AI and how the impact it's had on customer service. So yeah, I'm also really looking forward to, to Enterprise Connect to see how much further things have evolved from where we were this time last year, where everybody was dipping a toe in the water and actually seeing some really concrete use cases. Concrete use cases, indeed. It's been an extraordinary year. Uh, I, I, I use the word revolutionary, but I don't think I'm exaggerating. But but kind of elaborate how you guys leverage AI agents and Gen AI to revolutionize not only the you know customer service experience, but the uh, the agent experience. And you know, in this very busy, complex landscape, how do you see yourself fitting in? Uh, and differentiating yourselves uh, out there. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I think, you know, the key thing that differentiates us is that we've been doing conversational AI for a long time. So the company was mm. founded um, seven years ago, and that's all we've really done. That's been our focus. And we've built some fantastic examples of AI agents powered by conversational AI over the years. But what's really changed the game is the advent of generative AI uh, in the last year. So, yeah, we've got lots of major customers, um, you know, like some of the big airlines like Lufthansa, some of the big insurance companies like Allianz uh, over here in Europe that have all been using the, the platform to create, I suppose, what you might call traditional conversational AI-based AI agents. So uh, where we are now is that we're at the point where we can actually pretty much provide the AI workforce of the future. So it's very mm. much like hiring the very best agents uh, and just being able to put them into your contact center environment, being able to to work with your contact center vendors, you know, your, your Genesis, your Avaya, any of the CCAS vendors. Uh, and so we're there to, to create and manage the, the AI agents. And then we integrate with all of the systems that manage the human agents. And that sort of brings it all together into this fantastic, seamless experience uh, for the consumer, whether it's on voice, whether it's on chat, whether the uh, conversation goes between the different channels and whether it flips between human and AI. So yes, it's quite a complex um, setup behind, but the end result is it just comes out with this brilliant, seamless um, experience for the consumer where they don't have to wait. Uh, it's personalized to them and they can use pretty much any channel they like. Yeah, it's extraordinary to interact with one of your AI agents. And how do you stay on sort of the cutting edge in terms of language understanding and customer engagement, you know, resolving uh, customer inquiries um, what's your special sauce there? Uh, well, really, it is that, as you say, it's understanding and it's understanding mm. the of the conversation and being able to use that to give that you know, seamless experience to the consumer. So uh, a good example would be, you know, one of the large insurance companies in Europe. Uh, they have a concierge AI agent that is there and its main role is to... Um, mm. Uh, take the initial call with no delay whatsoever, uh, do the identification and the verification of the caller, and then also understand the intent. Uh, and that was even before the days of generative AI, they were getting up to sort of 95% in terms of intent recognition. Uh, and now with the, the concept of applying a large language model, you can really understand absolutely everything the, the caller or the, the texter is requesting. So you can really get that um, IDMV process really slick, but then more importantly, go and um, also work out what their intent is uh, and then prepare everything ready to, to get that resolved. Fantastic. And there's such a big gap between consumer, you know, customer expectations and the realities these days of customer service. What are your strategies there to close those gaps with AI technology? How do you identify them and then deliver them in real world kind of customer service environments in yeah. a seamless way? That's it. And no, I really feel for the people running customer operations in everywhere We're across the world, it's universal. There's just a real shortage of good human AI, sorry, good human mm. agents. 
uh, you know, it's uh, partly a hangover from the pandemic where people didn't want to go back to the contact center. They'd found different careers, but also just the, the cost of hiring and training and retaining the agents has made it really difficult as well. So universally, we're seeing this big gap between the availability of human agents um, and the levels of expectation from consumers, but also from the leadership of companies. So yeah, there's there's two gaps. There's a gap of the, the volume of the people, which we can fill through automation. And I'll get onto that in just a second but also the expectation gap. So there's an expectation of the consumers who've been playing with ChatGPT and they say, well, ChatGPT understands everything I ask it. It gives me an answer. Why can't you do that? Uh, and then on top of that, you've got the leadership of companies being advised by everybody from McKinsey to the other management consultants being told that uh, generative AI will improve their bottom line by 30%. So they're all putting pressure on the customer service leaders uh, to then get those savings using generative AI. But of course, it's not quite as easy as that. You can't just plug in ChatGPT and off you go. You know, we've seen some pretty horrible examples of, of, and, uh, of that just going horribly wrong. So the, what you have to do is really sort of pick off um, where you want to start and where you're going to get the greatest value. So that example that I gave earlier, just the simple concierge, um, that saves 30% of the agent handling time on every single call. And when you've got 20 or 30 millions of calls um, every year, and each of those calls is costing six or seven euros, all of a sudden you're in the tens of millions of savings, which will obviously please the, the leadership uh, of your company. But where it really comes in is where you do have a blend of conversational and generative AI. So what we're seeing mostly is people using the generative element of it uh, to improve the efficiency of the human agents and to improve the lives of the human agents. So uh, for the, the self-service stuff, it's taking away those mundane tasks. You know, I wouldn't want to be sitting there doing uh, identification and verification all day uh, or in an internal system changing passwords all day. So why not automate that with uh, a really well-built uh, AI agent that understands exactly what the person's requesting and completes that self-service ready to hand it over to the human agent as necessary or, or perhaps even to keep it in the self-service channel. So that's one area where we're, we're really seeing huge advantages. And then in the background, we're seeing an awful lot of agent co-pilot. So this is where the large language model is actually part of the call, and it's running in the background, giving the human agent all of the assistance they need. So, you know, uh, it can be sitting there listening to the conversation. And as the conversation is going, it's prompting up next best responses ready for the agent just to click on. And we've got a couple of... Um, systems in the pilot stages now where the human agent isn't doing any typing at all they're just sitting there and the large language mm. understanding everything that's being said it's summarizing it it's creating the notes it's creating the next best um, responses it's uh, doing sentiment analysis to say this could be a good moment to to say this or you know if there's an opportunity for, for an upsell that sort of thing uh, and so it's happening in the background uh, it's also because it's understood the intent, it can go off and get a lot of the background information that you need to resolve the issue. So again, you know, for an insurance example, if somebody's called in because they've had an accident with their car, um, the uh, the AI agent has already identified them, found out that they're calling about the car accident. And in the background, it's gone off and gone to the insurance backend system. It's gone to the CRM. It's got all of the details needed to resolve the person's question. And then there's the warm handover to the human agent to just do that bit there where, where they can then say, so I see you're calling about this. I've got all of the details here. I can supply you with a rental car when your car uh, is in the garage being mended. And then the best thing that all of the agents love is at the end of the call, because the agent, the uh, agent co-pilot has been running in the background it can actually do the call summary and wrap up so they just press a button there's this brilliant summary that's created that's consistent it's captured everything that's been said and you press another button and it updates the com uh, the back end system so it's taking a lot of pressure um, off the human agents but also providing that better experience to the consumer because they're not having to wait while the human agent goes and looks things up you know it's all happening in the background uh, and just providing that seamless experience Wow, that, that is incredible. So exciting. So much opportunity. Um, but let me ask you, I mean, AI, AI has been around at some level in the contact center for some time before large language models emerged on the scene, uh, typically involved lots of professional services and, you know, customization and flexibility were always challenges. So how do you sort of tailor your AI agents per customer or per industry you know, align with brand voice and all of the strategies that they uh, might have already in place. Yeah, that's it. I mean, 
before we had the large language models, yes, we were working generally with uh, large enterprises that did have a conversational AI practice. Uh, and so they already had the, the conversational designers and the people that knew how to you know, structure mm. the conversations and, and create pretty well formed bots that were really good at doing specific tasks. But obviously, if you tried to take them off track, they wouldn't understand what was going on. They, they would be, they'd be pretty good at getting you back on track and just saying, you know, I, I'm here to, to help you with your insurance claim or to rebook your flight or whatever. Uh, but of course, now with the, the capabilities with the large language models, you can it can reflect your brand if you want it to be. You know, with some of the synthetic voices now, they have intonation. You know, they appear to have empathy and understanding because the conversation mm. has been understood. You can then create a response uh, in voice or message that is actually empathetic and really human-like. So it is taking us to a new level and. Um, I think where it will take us will be that we'll go beyond customer service with uh, AI agents. You know, with customer service, you can put up with a small amount of friction if you have to. You know, if, you, if your home broadband is broken and you're desperate to get on your conference calls as you're working at home, you'll put up with a bit of friction to get it fixed. You know, you're a badly structured bot or whatever, or having to wait uh, on hold to get it fixed, you'll do it. If you're buying something, you probably won't. But mm. now with all of the capabilities and the you know, the, the creation of the brand voice and uh, the, the whole way that uh, the human conversation could happen with an AI. I think we're actually going to see a new wave of sales and marketing AI agents that are there to help people purchase stuff, either, you know, uh, understanding what their needs are and coming up with product recommendations or, you know, even doing things like uh, responding to, to physical advertisements or, or perhaps even, you know, uh, Instagram reels. You could be watching Instagram and see a product you like. You click on mm. the reel. And then you can have a messaging conversation with an AI agent that knows what you were just looking at and then can help you find out more about the product. So, yeah, I think that that's where we'll, we'll see things going. Exciting times ahead. The best is kind of yet to come almost. Oh, yes. um, you mentioned some of the bottom line uh, impacts in terms of ROI and dollar cents, pounds, euros. Yep. But what, what about other uh, aspects of success and you know, what are the kind of metrics that you and your customers use to measure uh, successful implementation of AI and customer service? And what other improvements have you seen beyond the uh, obvious dollar uh, yeah. ones? Um, the, the biggest thing that we see now is very much based on customer satisfaction. You know, as we were just mm. discussing, there's that huge gap between expectation of customer and what can be delivered and also the huge gap of having enough humans to service it. So a huge metric um, that everybody's focused on is obviously CPSAT and uh, MPS. So everybody's wanting to deliver a better service with either the same amount of resources as their company grows uh, or, in fact, with, you know, a slightly smaller number. So, yeah, that's been really big and... In fact, we've seen it that it's been more the case that people want to improve the customer satisfaction and reduce costs at the moment. They're, they realize that they're behind uh, in terms of the gap. And I don't think we've actually got a single customer that's been able to or wanted to uh, get rid of human agents as a result of replacing them with AI agents. It's very much about augmenting the humans um, with um, the self-service AI agents to do repetitive tasks, but also then bringing in that co-pilot to, uh, to help the humans do their job in a better way, or also just to improve the, the whole working environment for the humans. You know, one of the biggest costs in the contact center is churn. Uh, mm. And you know, it costs a fortune to hire, retain, and train an agent. And if you're getting through 100% churn like we do in Europe, because a lot of them are working students, um, and that really is a huge overhead on the business. So yeah, it's moved away from the, some of the traditional contact center metrics of you know, average handling time and first call resolution. It's it's much more about the agent handling time and how much can be automated in the background. But then it's all about CSAT and agent satisfaction because obviously the, the, the two components that deliver great customer service are happy agents and uh, happy customers. Mm. Happy agents, happy customers. What a world that would be. Would be. Um, so you're on the front lines of implementing AI agents, and you you, get, you really get your hands dirty. You see it all. Um, what are some of the big challenges you see when integrating AI into customer service with your clients, and you know roadblocks that you have to overcome? Yeah, I think it's just the misunderstanding. Obviously, everybody's mm. heard 
chat GPT and everybody's heard that it hallucinates. And then there's been a few examples where people have let chat GPT out in the wild to you know, create um, some, some chatbots that have, have gone slightly off the rail. So yeah, there's an awful lot of education that needs to be done. So um, probably every week we're presenting to you know, the chief executive or the board members of a major enterprise just as an educational wow. session to say, this is what's going on. Not, not even a sales pitch. This is what we're doing in AI. These, this is what you can do. This is what you can't do. So, yeah, the biggest challenge is very high expectations um, from the leadership of companies uh, and then just making sure that those expectations can be matched with something that really delivers an ROI. Um, from the other end of it, you know, there's um, uh, some organizations where they'll, they'll you know, have a center of excellence for conversational AI and generative AI, but not actually have the use cases identified. And they've been disconnected from the business. So it's making sure that you're connecting the people that have the knowledge and the capability of delivering something with the people in the business that have the problem that needs solving. And then just putting the two together and going, right, this is where we're really going to make an impact. And then we're going to iterate on it from there. Exciting. Well, imagine this discussion happening at a board level. Who would have imagined that just a couple of years ago? That's uh, wonderful for you and the industry. Um, I've been going to Enterprise Connect for, gosh, almost 15 years when it was called VoiceCon back in the day. If we were to fast forward to Enterprise Connect 2025, uh, what would you imagine uh, the role of AI and customer service and customer experience being? What are the big trends or opportunities, the evolution you say you, you might imagine in one short year? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think in 2025 that we'll all be replaced by the AI version <laughs> of ourselves going to the conference. I think that we're all still getting together. Um, I, I think that there'll be, yes, a, a shift in the landscape. Um, I think that there will be some really good customer facing AI agents that are powered with generative AI. So they will be there understanding all of the intent and all of the language that's being used and being able to answer any question but also being um, contained by guardrails of conversational AI to make sure that they only answer questions on which they have the knowledge source. So it could be, you know, simple like the the airline rebooking um, um, system. It could sort of, you could be asking Mm. sort of outside what it can do. Well, I understand that you want to bring your pet dog on the plane, but Mm. I'm here to help you rebook your flight and I will help you rebook your flight. Then I'll put you onto a human agent or another type of agent, another AI agent that understands your question. So it's not like, I'm sorry, I don't understand when it says I want to bring my dog on the flight. It's like, I do understand you want to bring your dog. Let's get you rebooked. And then I'll hand you over to somebody that can actually uh, answer the question. So I think we will see generative AI powered AI agents as customer facing. As I said earlier, I think we'll see the first sales and marketing AI agents as well. Um, mm. I, will be quite as far as having an avatar you go shopping with but i think it'll be you know uh, certainly things like where an upsell or a cross sell is happening might be you know in the the telecoms world that your mobile phone contract's coming to an end it'll be quite common that it's an ai agent that gets in contact with you as your contract comes to an end to do you the the renewal or the upsell uh, at the end of that i think we'll be seeing an awful lot more of that well i can't wait to see this unfold so exciting um, you're at Enterprise Connect. Uh, the team is there. Maybe what are some of the things to expect from your presence, some of the messages and news and announcements that are go- coming up? Anything you can preview as we begin Ooh. the melee that is Enterprise Connect? That's it. Yes, it's only uh, yeah. as, as we get there. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, certainly, we'll be doing uh, showcasing a lot of what people have actually done. So, yes, we'll mm. be talking a lot about the co-pilot side of things. Um, and being able to give demonstrations of some of the new voices that we're using as well, the synthetic voices, uh, and how really you're able to create that really human-like experience that has apparent empathy with what's going on in the conversation, and then the the right responses are being given with the right intonation and voice. Um, Other exciting areas, we're we're doing a lot with real-time translation. So you can have an agent speaking one language and a consumer speaking the other and the two of them communicating. Uh, we, we have this actually with, uh, the, with Lufthansa uh, when their um, contact center in Germany shuts in the evening. Uh, all of the chat uh, gets routed to an English-speaking contact center in the Philippines. And the, uh, the, uh, the German customers are asking questions on chat in German. And it's being translated real time to the English speaking agents in the Philippines who are replying back in English and they're able to have that conversation. Uh, I think we'll be seeing this in voice very soon. I think that we're pretty much there with the technology in terms of you know, reducing any latency and making sure that it's a really good human conversation. So, yeah, we'll be showing a lot of co-pilot, uh, a lot of 
really useful concrete use cases that use the large language models and perhaps a little glimpse of the future of what it will look like when it's a, a full generative powered AI agent talking directly to the consumer. I can't wait to see that. Lufthansa is one of my favorite airlines because they it's it's just the customer experience is just so great, whether it's through the app or when you call them or over messaging. It's just uh, they're always very helpful. So uh, U.S. Airlines, please take note uh, <laughs> regarding your uh, European colleagues there. Uh, it would be nice to see that industry wide. Well, congrats on um, all the goodness. And uh, I'll see you at Enterprise Connect. Have a, an amazing show. Yep, and uh, onwards and upwards. Great. Thank you very much. And good to talk to you. Thanks for watching, everyone. And stop by and, and see the folks at Cogity at uh, Enterprise Connect. Have a great yep. presence Have a there. Yep, Take care, great. everyone. Really, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.